As we select grasses to plant in the garden, the main characteristic that we want to consider is the plant form or structure. The many different species and cultivars, each has its own unique architecture that really lends itself to different uses in the, in the garden, whether it's something very upright and bold like our um, gold bar miscanthus, or this more graceful arching of our adagio miscanthus. Now the group that I want to look at today are grasses in the genus Penicetum, and these are called the fountain grasses. And they get their name from the flowering habit of the plant. Uh, they all produce these very plume-like, soft, sort of feathery flowers uh, up at the top, and they tend to arch gracefully over the plant, sort of in a fountain-like or water-flowing effect. And so that's where we get the common name, uh, fountain grass. And there's several different, there's several species that are common in the garden, and a few cultivars. And the first one that I'm going to look at is in the species Penicetum oriental, and this is Carly Rose, and it is adored for its purplish pink flower plumes. There's a really bright one in here. And it'll start to produce these flowers around July and it'll continue to produce new ones and hold the old ones well into the fall. And as they get older and produce seeds, they turn a little more brown in color, um, but they still will hold on to the plant. Uh, they might start to disappear midwinter. Um, but again, they have that very flowing graceful arching architecture and the stems are very fine so that they look almost like they're floating on top of the foliage and the foliage on Carly Rose is also very fine it has really nice texture. Carly Rose reaches a height of about three to four feet and it looks very nice when it's planted in mass like this. It's also very drought tolerant and works wonderfully in a xeriscape garden. The next cultivar we're going to look at is in a different species. This is in the uh, Penicetum allopecoroides, and this one's called Hamlin. And its structure is much different than Carly Rose. It's much more compact, and it also the stems tend to be very upright, so it doesn't really have that flowing architecture like most fountain grasses. Um, but it it has other charms. It's it's very compact, it has very fine blades, just, just like the Carly Rose. And it only reaches a mature size um, with the leaf blades of about 18 inches, maybe two feet once we get the flower heads on. So it's really a wonderful plant for some of those smaller spaces. When you plant it in mass like this, it makes a very nice, taller type ground cover. There's another cultivar that's very similar that's called Little Bunny, and it's just slightly smaller. It reaches a height of about 12 inches, uh, up to about 18 with the flower head. So both of these are wonderful for those small spaces. Um, but because of their form being more rounded and upright, they also contrast to the more flowing forms of grasses like these miscanthus. So they provide a little different structure in the landscape. Now all of the grasses that we looked at so far, the Carly Rose and the Hamlin as well as the Little Bunny, are cold hardy. They'll overwinter here in Oklahoma. But the next group I want to look at are not hardy here in Oklahoma, and these are purple fountain grasses. And you might think with all these hardy grasses, why do we want to grow something that we have to grow as an annual? And the answer to that is simply color. We don't get this color in any of our other grasses. This is probably the most common cultivar of purple fountain grass. This is rubrum, and it's been grow it's very common uh, landscape grass, and it's just adored because of these nice purple blades. And we really have wonderful color here. And of course, the plumes on top, um, they'll start off with some pink purple color to them as well. They just add a great amount of color in the landscape and are wonderful to use as an accent. Because we grow them as an annual, they also work wonderfully in containers as well. And this cultivar will reach about three or four feet. They're very quick growing. Now this year we experimented with a few different cultivars of purple fountain grass. And our, our OSU Horticulture Club was selling this one at their annual plant sale. And when we saw it, we just had to have it. This is called Fireworks. And we fell in love with the variegation on this. So, the midrib is more of a burgundy color and then it's flanked by this 
pink color. Um, in the spring, it was even brighter pink. It's changed a little bit throughout the course of the summer. Some of the blades have more of a green midrib with pink coloration. And so we end up with all sorts of mixtures of pinks and creams and greens and a beautiful explosion of color in the landscape. We've been very happy with how this one's performed. It also has the lovely nodding seed heads that just sort of dance in the wind and provide a lot of interest. There's a couple more that I want to look at as well. All of these purple fountain grasses are in a different species, Penicetum cetaceum. And these two cultivars that I'm going to look at now are unique because they're grown just for their foliage. They really aren't, we're not going to see them flower here in Oklahoma. Uh, but they have these magnificently wide leaf blades and so it just creates a great impact in the landscape. This cultivar is called Prince, and the one we have in the container is Princess. And the main difference between the two is their mature size. Prince is going to reach a height of four to five feet, while Princess is going to be more in the two or three foot range. Um, but really what we're growing them for is the, this really wide leaf blade. We don't see this in any of the other cultivars. As you can see, it looks wonderful in a mixed planting. Um, and Princess works really well in a container. Now we had this one in a shadier spot and you could see how the blades become a little more green when they're in the shade as compared to when they're in the full sun like the Prince behind it. And I have one last purple cultivar. And again, this was in the shade, so it has lost a little bit of its color. Uh, but this is called Little Red Riding Hood, and I really like this one because it has a finer leaf blade. And it does produce the flowers we're not going to find on Prince and Princess, um, but it does have real nice um, flower heads. And they're l really long, extremely long and narrow, so they have this, this very light appearance. So all of these penicetums are wonderful choices for the landscape and it seems that there's one for just about every situation we could think of.